On Monday, June 7th, 2021, the United States Food and Drug Administration approved a new treatment for Alzheimer's disease. Aducanumab, created by companies Biogen and Eastside, is the first treatment for Alzheimer's to be approved since 2003. That means that the most recent approval for an Alzheimer's treatment was almost two decades ago. This approval was extremely controversial in the world of neuroscience and medicine, so in this video, we're gonna talk about the treatment and why its approval is such a hot button issue. Stick around. Hello Neuronauts, Cognic here, and today we are going to talk about the controversial new Alzheimer's treatment that was just approved in the United States. We're going to talk about what Alzheimer's disease is, some previously approved treatments for Alzheimer's disease, and the new treatment called aducanumab. We'll talk about some of the clinical trials of the new treatment, and why a lot of doctors and scientists told the FDA not to approve it. First, let's talk about what Alzheimer's disease is. Alzheimer's disease is the most common type of dementia. According to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control, as of 2020, about 5.8 million people in the U.S. have the disease, while about 30 million people have the disease globally. The crazy thing is, that number is supposed to triple by 2060. Alzheimer's disease is not a normal part of aging. It's a progressive disease that generally impacts those over the age of 65. It begins with mild memory loss, but can lead to complete loss of function. An individual with severe Alzheimer's disease might not be able to remember basic things, have a conversation, or respond to the environment at all. This disease impacts parts of the brain that are very important for memory, thought, and speech. When the amount of a substance in your body changes because of a disease, we call that substance a biomarker for the disease. It tells us that the disease is there. For example, if a rare disease causes there to be elevated levels of some toxin in the blood, then we can test a person's blood for that toxin to see if they might have the disease. In Alzheimer's disease, the two most common biomarkers are amyloid plaques and neurofibrillary tangles. Amyloid is a general term for a class of proteins that's naturally produced in your body. When a protein called amyloid precursor protein, or APP, is snipped, one of the remaining fragments is called beta amyloid. Usually, beta amyloid fragments are small and soluble enough that they can be broken down and removed from places like the brain, but in Alzheimer's disease, this isn't the case. If amyloid precursor protein is cut incorrectly, then the beta amyloid fragments can be longer than expected. They can bunch up into these plaques that are insoluble and hard to remove. These clumps of plaque get stuck between neurons where they can actually grow and get worse. Neurofibrillary tangles are twisted fibers in the cells of the brain. They don't dissolve, and they're made of a protein called tau. Tau doesn't normally form neurofibrillary tangles. It's supposed to form microtubules. Microtubules are like the highways of our cells. They allow for nutrients and proteins to be transported around where they need to go. In Alzheimer's disease, there's an abnormal form of the protein tau, which causes microtubules to collapse. This can deprive cells of necessary transport routes and can cause the cells to die. In Alzheimer's disease, the tau protein is misfolded in a particular way, where it forms a C-shape at the center of a new tangle. It also has a loose end that sticks out of the tangle. Once a tangle has been initiated, more tau protein can be recruited to the site and will cause the tangle to grow longer and longer. We don't actually know why the tau protein in Alzheimer's disease gets misfolded into the shape that it does, but scientists are trying to figure it out. Beta amyloid plaques and neurofibrillary tangles are the two major biomarkers of Alzheimer's disease. These biomarkers are the primary suspect for causing the deterioration we see in patients, which is why drugs are being actively developed to target them. Before this most recent approval, there were five drugs on the market to treat Alzheimer's disease. These drugs do not target the root causes of the disease. Instead, they try to minimize cognitive decline while the disease progresses. In other words, these five treatments were for maintaining quality of life and function, not for stopping the disease. These treatments that were already on the market can be broken into three categories. The first of these groups is cholinesterase inhibitors. The second group is NMDA receptor antagonists, and the third is combination therapies. The approved drugs Aricept, Razadine, and Exelon are all cholinesterase inhibitors. Aricept is approved for all levels of Alzheimer's disease, while Razadine and Exelon are only approved for mild to moderate cases. Cholinesterase inhibitors are given to Alzheimer's patients to help them maintain memory, language, cognition, and other functions. The disease kills neurons that produce acetylcholine, which causes there to be low levels of that neurotransmitter. 
Cholinesterase inhibitors, also called acetylcholinesterase inhibitors, block the breakdown of acetylcholine by inhibiting the enzyme acetylcholinesterase. This raises levels of acetylcholine in the body, which then allows neurons that use acetylcholine to function more normally. Side effects of cholinesterase inhibitors can include nausea, vomiting, lack of appetite, and more frequent bowel movements. Side note, you might have heard of a chemical called sarin, which is used as a chemical weapon in the form of a nerve gas. Sarin gas, when breathed in, is actually a really strong cholinesterase inhibitor, so it does the same thing that these treatments do, sort of, just to a deadly level. People who breathe it in die of respiratory failure because acetylcholine builds up in their body, causing their muscles to lose normal function. Okay, so we've talked about three of the five treatments. The next one is called Nemenda, and it's approved to treat severe cases of Alzheimer's disease. It's the single NMDA receptor antagonist that's been approved for treating the disease. A receptor antagonist is something that inhibits or turns off a receptor. So Nemenda inhibits NMDA receptors. NMDA stands for N-methyl-D aspartate, and NMDA receptors regulate glutamate levels in the brain. Glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter, and it generally increases brain activity. Glutamate is also very important for learning, memory, and cognition, and so this drug aims to help patients maintain function by regulating levels of glutamate. Side effects of this drug can include headaches, constipation, confusion, and dizziness. The last treatment of those five that were previously on the market is a combination therapy. A combination therapy is just a combination of two or more treatments that might actually work better together. Numzaric is a combination of Aricept and Nemenda, so it's a cholinesterase inhibitor and an NMDA receptor antagonist put together. This combination therapy aims to slow down mental decline and improve cognition. Side effects can include a slower heartbeat, also called bradycardia, and fainting. Side effects can also include stomach problems like excess stomach acid and ulcers and the worsening of previous lung problems. So now that we talked about Alzheimer's disease itself and the treatments that were already on the market, let's talk about the new treatment that just got approved on Monday. This drug doesn't actually fit into any of the categories that I just mentioned. The treatment is called aducanumab, but it'll be marketed under the name aduhelm. It's a monoclonal antibody that targets beta amyloid plaques in the brain, making it the first approved treatment that targets one of the underlying causes of Alzheimer's disease. A monoclonal antibody in this case is a protein that's made artificially by scientists in a lab. It mimics our immune system's natural ability to fight off pathogens. When you get the flu, your body makes antibodies that fight off the virus. For this treatment, scientists artificially created an antibody that will go after beta amyloid plaques in the brain, sort of like your antibodies might go after a virus. Treatment will involve a monthly intravenous infusion and is intended to slow cognitive decline in people with mild memory and thinking problems. The expected dose is 10 milligrams per kilogram, so a person that weighs 70 kilograms or about 155 pounds will need about 700 milligrams of the treatment every month. According to the clinical trials, this is considered a high dose. The list price for this treatment is $56,000 per year, but this doesn't include the tens of thousands of additional dollars patients will have to spend on diagnostic testing and brain scans. There's a possibility that Medicare's Part B program might cover the cost of the drug, but Medicare hasn't made an official statement yet, and so this isn't confirmed. 600 clinical sites across the United States are ready to give people their first doses of the treatment, and Biogen has actually applied for regulatory review in Japan, Brazil, the European Union, and elsewhere. The side effects of this treatment are more severe than the other five treatments that were already on the market. The side effects of this new treatment include allergic reactions, also called immune hypersensitivity reactions, and something called ARIA-E. ARIA-E refers to something called cerebral edema, where the blood-brain barrier breaks down some of its structure. This leads to fluid accumulation, swelling, and bleeding in the brain. So does the treatment work? Well, I'll quickly run through a few clinical trial results for the new treatment. One of the first trials for the drug was a phase 1b clinical trial for safety called PRIME. This trial was a safety trial which is intended to figure out the dosage of the treatment and side effects. Of 185 patients that were dosed, 46 patients experienced ARIA-E. 65% of patients who experienced ARIA-E did not have symptoms from it, but 35% of them did have symptoms. Two patients died during this study from cardiac problems, and one of the deaths was potentially related to the RDAE, but that wasn't confirmed. Later in development, two phase three clinical trials were run. One of the trials was called ENGAGE, and the other one was called EMERGE. 
Before the trials were done, after 18 months, they did an analysis of some of their results, and because they didn't see any benefit, they actually discontinued the trials. The clinical trials were halted and development stopped in 2019. Then, three months of additional data was released, which showed that the EMERGE trial actually met its primary endpoint, or its goal. While the ENGAGE trial didn't meet its primary endpoint, one of the high-dose trial groups did actually see significant benefit. According to the studies, the high dose appeared to slow decline by 0.39 on an 18-point scale rating memory, problem-solving skills, and function. A lower dose in that trial and a high or low dose in the other showed no statistical significant benefit over placebo. Now that the drug has been approved under an accelerated approval program, Biogen actually has to run a stage 4 clinical trial to prove that there's benefit. This trial, called the EMBARC trial, has already begun. So now we get to the controversy of the treatment's approval, and I just want to add that these are not my opinions, but these are opinions of others that I researched. On Monday, June 7th, when the treatment was approved, Biogen stock jumped 38% and the company gained $16 billion in value. Patient advocacy groups that lobbied for the approval were excited, and they should be. Alzheimer's disease is devastating for families, and before now, there was very little hope for slowing down the disease. The new treatment does successfully reduce amyloid plaques in the brain. The problem is, other treatments that were in clinical trials in the past two decades did this as well. These other drugs that reduced beta amyloid failed their clinical trials because they didn't manage to slow down cognitive decline. This new treatment had barely enough evidence of slowing down the disease to get its approval, which has a lot of experts worried. Dr. Lon Schneider, director of the California Alzheimer's Disease Center at the University of Southern California, helped with one of the trials. He said that there's so little evidence for effectiveness, I don't know what caught the FDA's fancy here. Also, the FDA's label for the drug just says for the treatment of Alzheimer's disease. The patients in the Biogen studies were early stage Alzheimer's patients with mild cognitive decline and higher than normal levels of beta amyloid in the brain. This general label by the FDA almost suggests that anyone with Alzheimer's disease could be prescribed the drug even if they don't meet the criteria of the trial. According to the New York Times, some scientists worry that aducanumab's approval could lower standards for future drugs, allowing them onto the market before experts in the field are convinced that the benefits outweigh any safety risks. In the past, some drugs have failed stage 4 clinical trials and have actually had their approval taken away. That doesn't mean that the FDA has to take their approval away even if they fail. See, the FDA is under a lot of pressure right now from patient advocacy groups and experts in the field. So why would the FDA be so relaxed about these weak clinical trial results even against the recommendation of its own advisors? Well, it all comes down to need and desperation. There were no treatments on the market that addressed the root causes of Alzheimer's disease, and patients with the disease and their families wanted hope. Even if the data doesn't scream success, it wasn't a complete failure either. Dr. David Notman, a clinical neurologist at the Mayo Clinic and a site principal investigator for one trial, put it like this, I had this conversation with a real patient who was very interested in it. I presented the data to the patient and her husband, and they didn't hear a word I said about my concerns. All they heard was that there might be benefit. I, for one, really hope that this treatment passes its stage 4 clinical endpoint. Is the data concerning and a little weak? Yeah, but I hope that those are just issues in the study that they'll find a way to iron out. I used to volunteer in the Alzheimer's wing of a nursing home, and I remember the devastation that this disease can have on patients and their families. Like I said, I really wish Biogen success, I hope that this treatment works out, and I really hope that it benefits the patients that are taking it. That was a long video for sure, but if you made it this far, consider subscribing to the channel. I try to make videos on neuroscience, psychology, and philosophy of mind every Thursday, so stick around, maybe you'll learn something. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care of your brains, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace guys.